All right, amen. I'm going to go ahead and get into the word. And our ministry is called But Now Fellowship. Mm -hmm. Now, as I've explained to you, you understand that we are in the what? But, but now. now Dispensation. Right? And I explained to you already that dispensation just means uh, it's to give out or to set apart. Right? And, and God dispenses his will in different sections and at different times. And now his will today is the dispensation of grace. So if you don't understand that, you're not in the will of God. Because he's not operating this program or this program. God is not the author of confusion. He's not going to operate both programs. Amen. Right? He's not the author of confusion. He is only operating the dispensation of grace today. Jesus. And we picked the name But Now. It's, it's, it's funny because I had this message for so long. The original names that we went with were already taken. And so we were saying that uh, uh, Pastor L. Page was telling me, he said, let's go with But Now. Mm. He said, because I guarantee you nobody has that name. Jesus. 95% <laughs> of people don't write a divide. Yeah. And true built, nobody had nothing even close to that. And, and it was funny. I, said, I told him, I said, you know what? I got a message that's called But Now. Jesus. And I said, it's going to be so fitting. And I'm going to explain and go through the But Now. And that's why we have our name, But Now Fellowship. Right. We're fellowshipping in the But Now. Amen. Amen. If you would, turn your Bibles with me to Ephesians uh, chapter number 2. Ephesians chapter number 2. Now we have to understand that we are no longer in Adam. Because Paul tells us in Romans 5 and 12 that by one, by one man's sin, sin has come on all of us. Right? We're no longer in Adam. We are now in what? Christ. In the but now we are in Christ. So when we step out of Adam, we step into Christ. You see? And once we step out of Adam and into Christ, he steps out of heaven and into us. Jesus. You see? Mm. Once we step out of Adam, our sinful nature, and we step into Christ mm. according to the message of grace, then Christ begins to step out of heaven and into us. Jesus. And he dwells in us today, right? Man. You see, the Son of God became the Son of Man so that the, son of, the sons of men can become the sons of God. Jesus. You see, follow me. The son, of, the son of God became flesh, the Son of Man, so that you and I, the sons of men, can become the sons of God. You see? Jesus. All by the work of the Christ on the cross. You see? And what you understand when you study Paul's epistles is that we're not only striving to be children of God, but we want to be joint heirs with Christ. Romans, uh, Paul said in Romans 8, 17, that we ought to be joint heirs with Christ. When you get saved, if you don't live with God and you trust the message of Christ, you're going to go to heaven. You're just going to be a child of God. You receive no reward. But when you get into this word and you study, you become sanctified not by what you do, but you're sanctified by the word. There you go. By what you know. And when you become sanctified, then you receive your reward. We're all going to be judged. The problem is, do you want to be judged at the judgment seat of Christ? Or do you want to be judged out here? <laughs> you see, if you're judged in the judgment seat of Christ, that means you're already made it to heaven. If you, want, if you wait to this judgment, that means you're going to hell. Jesus. The only prophecy today is I can prophesy that if you don't trust Christ, you're going to be out here. Mm. That's the only prophecy that's operating today. It's in the scripture. Right? It's in the scripture. Because prophecy means the what? Foretell the what? Future. Right. The only future that hasn't happened yet is this out here. Mm. Which we don't even receive this. We're caught up right here. Jesus. 1 Thessalonians 4 17, Paul says, We'll be caught up in the air. Those that are dead in Christ shall rise first. Right. We missed this. Paul said in 1 Thessalonians 5 and 19, 5 and 6, uh, 5 and 9, excuse me, we are not appointed to wrath. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If we're not appointed to this, mm -hmm. then how can we be judged out here? Jesus. See, when you trust the shed blood of Christ on the cross, we miss all of this. Jesus. We miss all of that. Right? But you got to understand the but now. Right. Ephesians chapter number 2. Let's start at verse number, let's see. Let's start at verse number 5. It says, even when we were dead, it says, has quickened us, and then it says, has quickened us together with Christ, by grace you are saved, and has raised us up together, and made us sit together in where? Heavenly places. 
Hold on. Where? Heavenly. Not earthly, right? Heavenly. Okay. So, so heavenly places. In who? Christ. In Christ Jesus. Nobody can go to heaven unless you're perfect. Nobody goes to heaven unless you're perfect. Amen. Right? So how do we get there? Right. In Christ Jesus, because he was what? Perfect. And he is what? Perfect. There you go. Verse number seven. That in the what? Ages to what? Come. Now understand these details of these words. In the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should what? Boast. Verse number 10, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus uh, unto good works, which God had before ordained that we should what? Walk in them. Mm -hmm. Verse number 11, wherefore remember that ye being in what? Time past. Time past, Gentiles in the flesh who are called the uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands. All right. Mm -hmm. right? That at the time ye were without Christ, mm -hmm. who was it talking to? Gentiles. Gentile. In what? Time what? Yes. All right. And it says that what? In, time, in verse 12, that we are in time that we are without Christ, All right. being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise. promise. Even when you listen to people talking about we're part of the new covenant, no, we're not. Amen. Because what does this say? Strangers from the covenants of promise. All we're not a part of the new covenant. The new covenant talks about what Israel will receive out here, right? <laughs> so we were strangers from those things, having no hope and without God in the world. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness, look at this 13th verse. What does those first two words in the 13th verse say? But now. But now. <laughs> See, in time past, it was explaining to us who we were. And when you look at the chart, we're down here. Mm -hmm. But now, but now, oh, but now in who? Christ in Christ Jesus. Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. Thank, Thank you, Lord. Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Now, when we look at the thing, verse 2 Timothy 2, 15, it says, study to show that self approval, work need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. If Paul told us that, don't we think it ought to be Paul who explains us how to do it? Mm -hmm. You see? If Paul tells us to study to be approved, and then to rightly divide it, it should be Paul who explains to us how to do it. Jesus. Right? So when we look at the book of Ephesians, we understand that Paul is telling us not to be scriptural, but dispensational. Because mm -hmm. he's telling us to rightly divide. Mm -hmm. Right? He's telling us to get the set of instructions that God has for us today. Mm -hmm. Right? Now, most people always say God never changes. He never changes who he is. So all of this stuff, and he never changes. I agree with that. Do you agree? Yeah. His character and who he is never changes. Right. But the way he deals with man does change. Amen. Because it started out right here, and with Adam, he what visited Adam in the what? Cool of the garden. Mm -hmm. Does he do that with us today? Jesus. Something changed. Amen. Right? Now, go, go to Malachi 3 and 6. Get Malachi 3 and 6 and Hebrews 13 and 8. <laughs> Get Malachi 3 and 6, and then Hebrews 13 and 8. I'm using my Bible today because I want to turn so I know when you have it. Because with the iPad, I can just push the keys. <laughs> but I want to turn so I can make sure I'm not starting until you have it. Amen? Amen. All right, which one do you have first? Malachi. All right, let's go to Malachi 3 and 6. Uh... For I am the Lord, I what? Change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not what? Consumed. <laughs> now, how do you explain that? Mm. The three basic functions of dispensation. Who wrote it? Why they wrote it? And who were they writing to? Let's see who wrote this. Malachi. Let's see who he is writing to. Go to Malachi 1, chapter 1, verse 1. Malachi chapter 1 verse 1. The burden of the word of the Lord to who? Israel. Israel. To who? Israel. Israel. Okay. Oh now, Amen. go back to Malachi 3 and 6. It says, For I am the Lord, I change not, therefore ye sons are not consumed. What God is saying is that I am the Lord. I made a covenant with Israel and I won't change in that covenant. Mm. See? That's what he's saying. Mm -hmm. This is not saying I never change, nothing never changes, because we see that the program has changed. 
But what he's saying to, he's talking to Israel, letting them know that the sons of Jacob, and we know that Abraham had a son Isaac, Isaac begot Jacob, and God changed Jacob's name to Israel. Mm -hmm. And then Jacob's sons became the 12 tribes of Israel. Mm -hmm. And then the 12 tribes of Israel started the nation of Israel. Mm -hmm. So what God is telling them here is that I'm not going to change. What I promised you over here mm -hmm. is going to come to pass over here. Jesus. You see, Hebrews 13 and 8. See, God in his person never changes. Mm -hmm. But God's program to, that man has to follow has changed. You see, it's changed because we have changed. Mm -hmm. And Adam, we were what? At first, he was what? Perfect. Mm -hmm. So since he changed, God had to change. God is still perfect. God is not the one that changed. Adam changed. So the way God had to deal with Adam had to change, right? And when we see that, uh, uh, God gave Adam and Eve a program to follow, right? And he would visit them in the cool of the evening. That's visible. It says that they heard a voice walking. He would visit them in the cool of the evening. But then when they ate of the tree that God told them to eat from, when he called for them, what were they doing? All right. All right. Something had to change. Jesus. <laughs> because before, God come on down. He was having a Bible study with them. Mm. He was teaching them his statutes. He would visit with them. But when they were disobedient, man changed. He went from perfect to sinful in his nature, mm -hmm. which is why we have that sin nature, because it came from Adam, mm -hmm. even though Eve was the one who first, but we'll go to that. Right? Wrong way. <laughs> but, see, but we have that sin nature because of Adam. Right? Mm -hmm. You see? So so we have to understand that the program has changed and the way God had to deal with Adam totally different. Uh, Hebrews 13 and 8. Jesus Christ, the same what? Yesterday, today, and forever. That many never changes. How do you explain that? Jesus. Jesus Christ was the same in time past. He's the same in the but now, and he's going to be the same in the age to come. Right. You have three things there. Three is the number of spiritual completion. Mm -hmm. You have what? Yesterday, today, mm. forever. He was the same in time past, but now, today. and the ages to come. Well, His blood is going to save Israel. It saved Israel yesterday in time past. It's going to save us today, and it's going to make bring forth that new covenant for Israel in time to come. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So he never changes in who he is and God who he is. But his, but his changes in how he deals with us. Mm -hmm. See, most people don't understand that. They just read the scriptures and since they don't understand it, well, he don't never change. He does not ever change in his character. But the way he deals with us does change. So we have to understand uh, in dispensationalism, when you study the Bible dispensational, the issue is not God's unchangeable, immutable nature. It's the fact that his dealing with man has changed from different points in time. Now, as we go back from the time past, but now, and the ages to come that Paul gave us in Ephesians 2, we understand that whatever God's dealing with man is based on circumcision and uncircumcision, mm -hmm. you are in time past. Understand what I'm saying? Back here, go to Genesis chapter 12 as I'm talking. Genesis chapter number 12. Back here, God made a promise to Abraham. Right? Mm -hmm. When God made the promise to Abraham, he gave him a promise based on not what he, not his work, because he actually was asleep. <laughs> God put him to sleep so he didn't have to work. He just gave it to him based off his faith. Mm -hmm. right. You see, Paul talks about Abraham, Romans 4, according to the faith of Abraham. Right. In the book of James, which is in the age to come, it talks about Abraham based on his circumcision. That's right. Mm -hmm. You see? The covenant. Now, when you don't understand it and study your Bible dispensationally, you say that Paul and James preached the same message because they mm -hmm. talked about Abraham. Jesus. No. Paul talked about Abraham who worked not but just had faith. Mm -hmm. That's right. James says, for faith without works is dead because right. even Abraham got circumcised and did a work. That's That's right. Right. See, but, but, but James talks about Abraham in Genesis 22. Paul talks about Abraham at the very beginning of the promise That's in Genesis 15. Right. That's right. You see? So you have, to, you have to rightly divide the word of truth. So as you look at this, Genesis chapter number 12, you see first in Genesis chapter number 3, you don't have to turn there, but it says that the seed line, uh, the seed of the woman had come down to Abraham and that God, uh, Satan made a promise 
uh, in time past to Adam concerning the seed of that woman. When he was talking to Adam, uh, Eve in the garden, he, he says, you won't, you won't surely die. Hmm. You know, you won't surely die. <laughs> You see, and then when they did that, God said, "Out the seed of the woman will bruise his heel." Mm -hmm. The heel of the woman will bruise his head. And what God was saying is that the seed of the woman, Jesus Christ, his heel will bruise the devil's head. Because as we said earlier, when Jesus was standing, when Jesus is sitting at the right hand of God, he's going to make his enemies his what? So that means that his what heel will pierce the what head of the serpent. You see, so all of those things tie together, but I just want to let you know that because that's what came down. Now, in Genesis chapter number 12, in chapter number 11, you have the, the, when God confused the languages at the Tower of Babel. Oh, yeah. You see, so God confused those languages. So you had people, the Gentile people doing everything. You had all these people, all these people before this time were Gentile. They were doing all kinds of things. But then God in chapter number 12 set out who? Abraham. Abraham. And then the distinction was started to come. Mm -hmm. You see, because he chose Abraham, who was a Gentile, out of the Gentile nations, because they were not doing what God told them to do, and he gave them a promise. And when he said, the seed of the, let, let's read it, chapter number 12, verse, verse number one, now the Lord has said unto Abram, now his name wasn't changed yet, mm -hmm. get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee. Verse 2, and I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee, and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Now as we look at this, God began to separate the nation, and when they came out of Egypt some 430 years later, they became that great nation. Mm -hmm. Right? The law wasn't given to up here. From promise to Moses was 430 years. Right? So from what God was doing is giving them the promise all the way here. God fortified the promise or strengthened the promise by giving them the law. Right? So, so as, as we look at that, we see God promised Abraham and his seed the land forever. The land. Notice that, right? He promised them the land. That's Genesis chapter 13, verses 14 and 15. He promises them the land forever. Not if they're obedient. Not that they do. He said, I promise you the land forever. So we read in Malachi that God says, I never change. The sons of Jacob will not be consumed. He was going back to this promise. He's not going to change in his promise to them. Right? And that's what we have to see there. And it's all about that. And it's what sets Israel apart. Now, as we go to Genesis chapter number 17, go to 17, verse number 9. Mm -hmm. Now, now notice now, Abraham was already saved by what? Faith. Because all God told him to do is just look at the number of stars and count them. That's where your seed shall be blessed. And Abraham said he believed it. First of all, because he couldn't count them all, so he had to believe it. So he believed it, and by faith, God saved him. Amen. Then he put him to sleep, and God himself walked through this. We'll get into that. But, but God himself did that while he was asleep. He had to do no works. But now, when you go to Genesis 17, now here come the work. This is what this is what changed Jesus. Verse number nine, and God said unto Abraham, Thou shalt do what? Keep my covenant, therefore, thou and thy seed after thee in their generations. This is my what? Covenant which ye shall keep between me and you and thy seed after thee. Every man child among you shall be what? Circumcised. If ever there's a distinction between circumcision and uncircumcision, you are aware. In time past. That's not your program. Amen. Amen. That's not your program. Amen. Because he says it right here. Everybody see, and Abraham see, we know is the who? Nation of Israel. Amen. And it says, every man child among you shall be what? Yes, Circumcised, because that's what sets them apart. Mm -hmm. Right? That's what sets them apart. Let's keep reading. And ye shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin, and it should be a token of the covenant between me and you. See, now God is telling him, now you got to work for this. You see? Because before, I already done saved you over here. See, but God used Abraham for a twofold purpose. Oh, man. See, he used Abraham to be a blessing to us today by giving him righteousness according to his faith. And then for Israel, he allowed them to use Abraham too because now he has to work for the, to receive the covenant. Right? And verse 12, and he that is eight days old shall be circumcised among you. Every man child of your generations, he that is born in the house or bought with money or any stranger, which is not of thy seed. Verse 13, 
He that is born in thy house and he that is bought with thy money must needs be what? Circumcised and my covenant shall be in your flesh for an everlasting covenant. How can we be added to that? We can. Hebrew, the book of Hebrews, people think Paul wrote that. No, he didn't. And we're going to get to that because we're going to get to the ages to come. But in the book of Hebrews, it talks about the new covenant that Israel will receive. Because right here, it tells us the covenant from between Israel was to be everlasting. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Look at verse 14. And the who? Uncircumcised. Who are the uncircumcised? Yeah. Gentiles. You and I. Men. The uncircumcised man child whose flesh of his foreskin is not circumcised, mm -hmm. that soul shall be what? Cut off from his people. He had broken my covenant. Right? We were not even in the program of God. We were not even in the program of God. But whatever the God's dealings with man is based on circumcision and uncircumcision, you are in time past. And that's Genesis to Acts. Because we, we everybody understands it. Over the Old Testament, the Old Testament, we understand that. Let's go to the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Let's go to the New Testament. Well, let's go there. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Uh, let's go to Mark chapter 7. What you have to understand 